All right, yo, so Alexia, your boy dropped the album finally, The Death of Slim Shady. Amazing. So, all right, that's it, y'all. We'll see you later. Bye. <laughs> I was behind the struggle. <laughs> Alexia, amazing. Nah, uh, yeah, so sorry we're a little late to this, but Eminem dropped the album. But sorry, not sorry, because I had to listen to it like 25 times. Wow. Dedication right there. I... Not had to, like I wanted to, but I was like, guys, like, <laughs> like, please, is that all you've been listening to? Is that like all you've had in rotation? Oh, now that you say it out loud, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> wow, really? That's crazy. I, yeah, I had to think about it, but I'm like, wait, have I listened to anything else? Wow, okay. Mm. Nice, nice, nice. Like, mm. <laughs> seem satisfied. <laughs> um, so. What was your takeaway from the album, or what were some of your favorite songs? Oh, we're going to do this now. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm just curious, you know, because, like, I'm an Eminem right. fan, but you're, like, an Eminem stan. Like, you, like... No, I'm not. Yeah, all right, y'all. I'm not a stan. I, I like, okay, <laughs> I love Eminem, but I've never gone to, like, a concert or whatever, and I'm not, like... I didn't listen to the album the day it came out, you know, what was it, Midnight? Anyway, point is... um. As many times as I as I as I've heard it, mm-hmm. I did not memorize it. So, <laughs> oh, okay, wow. Shocker. I mean, I should because that's how good it is. But okay, so um, let's see. Some takeaways, just if you guys remember off the top of your head as well. Um, I remember brand new dance. That shit made me laugh almost the entire time. Really? How come? I don't know. Like, I think Eminem is. I think he's funny. He's also really good at what he does. And this sort of gave me like the the vibes of ass like that. But <laughs> threw me off the way you came in saying that. <laughs> <laughs> when he's like, Hillary Duff is not quite old enough, so I had never seen a butt like that. <laughs> anyway, um that song was funny. So this song was funny because he was like, I'm gonna make a brand new dance and like I don't remember the words yet because I was laughing the whole time, so I was, like, half listening because that shit was funny! He was, like, you know, basically, like, we're gonna make a new dance, but you can only do it once. You like, you only have, have one time to do it right because it's gonna, like, paralyze you and put you in the hospital. Oh, okay, but- yeah, that, that was, I was gonna ask. That was the one where he was talking about Christopher Reeves, right? I mean, he said, he talked about Christopher Reeves in, like, half of these songs, but that one was, like, yeah, OD. But, and to be honest... I don't even know who Christopher Reeves was. I didn't know until, like, Eminem says his name a lot, which I noticed. And I was like, who is this man that he keeps, re- keeps referring to? Yeah. And then I think I I asked you and I looked it up. And you were like, oh, he's some old Superman movie star. <laughs> he's that the original became... Superman. <laughs> Put some respect on him. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> so the point is, he was completely disabled and couldn't, like, talk or or walk, right? Yeah, paralyzed. But he couldn't talk either? Uh, yeah, I think that also happened. It affected his speech, yeah. Right, so I was just like, why didn't he go with Stephen Hawking? Because it look, sounds like the same, a similar injury or whatever. And that's, I know who that is, but I didn't know who, what his name, Reeves was. So I was Damn. like, anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, Moving on, sorry. Brand New Dance was hilarious. I, like, even if I listen to it, like, again, I'll, I'll laugh the whole time. Um, Some notable tracks, I think, Um, unfortunately, and I only say this because... I am a Christian, you know, and like everyone's like, oh, I'm an the Antichrist, blah blah. Like, shut up, it's entertaining. Anyway, um, shut up, Evil, Evil, wow, uh, Evil, Evil. <laughs> I, I, is, that, is that one of the bonus tracks? <laughs> Evil. Oh, let me see. Oh yeah, Evil just came out, y'all, uh, last night. I like this way ahead of it. I just learned how to read right now. <laughs> um, evil. Uh, uh, Antichrist was in- like interesting. Fuel was amazing. Mm. Um. I mean, Houdini was good, too. Uh, Guilty Conscience, too. Amazing. And then, obviously notable, temporary, right? When he's, like, talking to his daughter after he dies and whatever. Yeah. And I think, um, obviously, that was a good song. uh, Because we've been with Eminem for three decades now. So, it's not that we're Haley's parents as well. But, like, we were there when, when she was, you know, a baby. Like, we were... So, we know the story. So, when he's talking to her... It's not like, I'm crying because what if it's me? No, it's literally like, damn, this father loves his daughter. And that's, that's like, pure. And that's, like, something, like, worth, like, saving. Yeah, of course. Um, and then, 
Um, I guess I think somebody save me. I think that's, that's like the last track, me. right? Yeah, yeah, that's a jelly roll. Yeah, that one stuck out to me. Um, not that it was maybe the, not that it was the best one on the album, but I don't know for some reason, I really like that one. And then obviously like Toby, but uh, I think you mentioned before like Houdini and Toby are a little not overplayed, but since they were played so much already, it's like they're sort of lower on the on the tier because we've already heard them. Yeah, which there's a little bit of truth in that, but I still enjoy those ones as well. Um. Same, like Houdini for me personally, and I don't know if you had this same um experience, but listening to it in the context of the album gave me a different appreciation for the record because of where it falls on the track listing and the timeline. Oh, really? Not for me. Maybe because I wasn't paying attention that much. Wow, but okay. I know he said, like, listen to the album in order because it's, it's a concept album, yeah. which is crazy because Eminem hasn't done that before. Yeah, I mean, like, especially to this extent, like, oh, d- and it was, not. it did. It told a story. It was like, it was very. I don't want to say detail. It's the wrong word, but um, he did. A, he did a really good job, like, each individual song and then the whole thing, as a whole, because we did a podcast once on like best hip hop album, and obviously this wasn't out yet back then. But like, we were talking about the albums that were concept albums that had like these bigger picture stories um and then okay not to say like kendrick's bigger picture story was you know like him talking about the culture but M- and eminem's was basically his him him fighting himself right but <laughs> yeah pretty but much. as yeah but as a work of a, a body of art a work of art it was still like really good no it definitely was it was probably the most enjoyable eminem album i've heard in recent years um and I know, and it was long pause, big pause. Um, yeah, and it was uh, extensive. It was nineteen tracks. And the funny thing, I guess, for me is that I listened to this album, and I know before, like we spoke about this on the podcast, and I kind of said like, oh, you know, like I don't really remem- really remember the album before this, which was Music to Be Murdered by. I actually went back and listened to Music to Be Murdered by. Uh, first of and? all, that album is yo long as fuck like there are hella tracks on that album there's about 36 songs on that album yeah but i bring that up to say i enjoyed the hell out of it like listening to it again with fresh ears like i really got to take it in i was like damn i was like Eminem was, like, really going in on that record, like, really spitting. And, like, he was addressing yeah. a lot of things that people accuse him of. So, four years later, coming out with the death of Slim Shady, you know, it was refreshing to hear him kind of go back into that Slim Shady bag. You can even hear the difference in the, like, the sound in his voice. So, he sounded more like how we did back in the early 2000s. Oh, fact. Yeah, you know, and... I don't know, I just really enjoyed the album. Just the story that was kind of going through it. Like, you know, like the first track, Renaissance, he's basically like kind of going right at, you know, critics and reviewers and Gen Z and kind of saying like, you know, like y'all going to like pander everything no matter what. Like if it was back in the day, all these albums that we consider classics, if they came out now, you guys would find something wrong with this. So like I'm done trying to please you. Then That's why I love Eminem though, but go on. Yeah, you know, then Habits. You know, I love that record. I like the hook is like infectious as hell. And it's basically kind of him like going back and forth, kind of saying like, damn, like, like, I miss you, Slim. Like, I kind of need you in order to like vent this out because Eminem, Marshall Mathers tries to be politically correct, but you just don't give a fuck. So then on the third track, Trouble, you will hear like Slim Shady basically pouring the liquor and getting Marshall, like, drunk and tying him up, which is why it goes into the next song, Brand New Dance, and that's a whole Slim Shady track. That's not even, like, Eminem in the story of the album. And then Evil is, once again, uh, Slim Shady. Lucifer is Slim Shady. Antichrist is Slim Shady. You know, when it's like, I really like the duality. And Road Rage. Uh, yeah. But he's out here saying the things that, like, no one else will say. He's saying, like, I love it because we're in a day and age when it's true. That, like, everyone gets offended over everything. And as soon as they are, they have all these rights, right? 
So I love that Eminem called like all of them out. Yeah, I, I agree too. But I think the way how we did it this time around was um the approach was a lot better because he did it within the concept where previous albums like Kamikaze and Music to Be Murdered by he was ridiculed for that by critics because they're just like, all right, like all Eminem is doing now is making music to get back at the people who don't like his music anymore. And that's kind of like the thing people started like, you know, making jokes about him about like, oh, okay, Eminem is just like the old guy rapper. It's like, oh, y'all don't understand lyrics no more. Y'all don't appreciate it. And they're like, all right, got it. Like the next album is going to be Eminem talking about all the reviews he got on the last album and apologizing for it and vice versa. But Oh, then he twisted that real well yeah. and put their shoes right back in their mouths. <laughs> that was a crazy analogy. <laughs> I don't know. That's how my brain works. Uh, crazy. Also, how awesome, how awesome would it be to just kind of be like, Oh no, that version of me, that's the asshole. Be mad at him. I'm not that person. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Like, even like, what song was it, Road Rage? W- or no, I think that was Guilty Conscience, where he was basically apologizing yes. to MGK and Ja Rule, kind of like, yeah, yeah like, and Slim was like, why? Like, shut up, you know? Yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it was just dope the way how we did it. And then, you know, going further to the album, you know, Head Honcho, Temporary Bad One, Toby, like, it was just great. You know, uh, my personal favorite track is Fuel, um, just because... Mm-hmm. Fuel went hard. Yo, the way he's rapping on that, Bro, both of them. unparalleled. Both of them. Like, first of all, I, I want to give props to J.I.D. Because not many people can be on a track with Eminem without getting completely murdered. And I'm not saying that Jin surpassed... Um, and then he, he held his own. Like, I wasn't looking at it like, damn, that nigga, why was he even there? I was like, nah, he did his so, thing. So let me put my ignorant comment in or question in now. Ignorance, go. What, what language was he speaking? J.I.D.? Yeah. He was speaking English. No, he was speaking another language in, in a part of it. Welcome, everybody, to Behind the Struggle. Alexia's confusing the song Head Honcho with Fuel. I thought we were talking about Head Honcho. No, I was talking about Fuel. Oh, why did I think we were talking about Head Honcho? Because <laughs> I was like, yeah, Fuel's like my top three for sure. Head Honcho's my bottom three. Why Why are we talking about this? Because I was saying my favorite song was Fuel and that how, like, they were both spitting and that, like, not many people can get on the same <laughs> track as Eminem <laughs> and that, like, J.I.Z. Oh, so... held his own. And then you were like, yeah, what language did you spit? I'm like, I'm, ta- I'm talking about the same So Head Honcho so. just came out of nowhere. Yeah, that's the struggle, y'all. <laughs> oh. <laughs> You're like, what language no. are you speaking? I was like, English? Like... I was like, nah, that was definitely not English. Oh, fuel. Wait, what? Yeah. I don't even know why I thought we were talking about head honcho. I obviously, like. You talked about head honcho. I was talking about fuel. You switched gears. Weird. I don't know why I did that. Get, All right, get, get back on track, Alexa. Get back on track. Skirt! There you go. Um, Yeah, like just the way how J.I.D. was rapping on there, his cadence, even his enunciation with words, you know, like I could put the pussy on the platter like a platypus. You know, just a uh, alliteration of that. Like, I loved it. Eh, but I d- that didn't impress me. Well, to okay. me, it wasn't. To me, it's not about like the bar. The bar wasn't like, oh damn, it was the pronunciation. It's like a tongue twister. I could put the pussy oh. on a platter like a platypus. You know, it's just like, oh, like not a lot of people could say that like three times fast. And he just sounds effortless. Like it doesn't sound like he's trying to like rap. It just sounds like it's natural for him. Where a bunch of guys are like, you know, anyways. That aside. Then Eminem came on the track, and Jesus Christ! When I first heard it, I had to like stop. I had to, I had to like pause and be like, "No, nah, there's there's no way niggas rapping like this, bro." Like, Which track are we talking about? Fuel. I'm still on fuel. All, <laughs> all right, right, all right. I'm still on fuel. All right. <laughs> when Eminem's verse got on there, and he literally like for the past few decades, I've been letting that text spray since the day that I met Dre, and then like. Uh, I'm like an R A P E R. Uh, got so many S A's. S A's. He's like, oh, he didn't just spell the word rapper and leave out a P, did he? I was like, this nigga is bugging. Like, he went off. Genius though. Like, like that. That's yo, the type of shit that like nobody but M could do. That's what like, I'm saying. Like, I'm not even saying like they could like on a song. I'm saying like they wouldn't even be able to write that. They wouldn't even think about it. Like, little shit like that. Like, okay. 
maybe, <laughs> maybe <laughs> some sort of like, and I maybe some sort of like one random off in the middle of a song that has nothing to do with it. Little Wayne could could do, but no, a- Eminem like telling like a whole story in a album in a verse like and and doing that shit like that shit like the triple quadruple entendres like yeah so so here's here's the one i'm gonna do real quick the lyricist in me has to pay homage to this because it's amazing so i'm gonna do a little bit of a a, i'm gonna go by the lyrics break break breakdown because i agree with with a lot of what you're saying right now all right calm down uh so when hear you (laughs) when he was saying I'm like an R A P E R. Got too many S A S S A sexual assault. Obviously, right? If y'all didn't get that, and then, you know, then he like does like, oh wait, he didn't just spell the word rapper and leave out a P Diddy, you know, which is a play on words P Diddy. You know, I literally had to like stop to like stop it and just run it back. I was like, oh, this but guy's that's what I'm talking crazy. about. That and is then, like a duff, different level of genius. Yeah. Then what he did afterwards is like he kept following up. Like then, because then I was like, after I stopped it, I was like, nah, like. I wasn't ready. Too I, hot. I, I got too hot. I got anxiety. I was like, I don't think I'm ready for where this is gonna go. Like he just started the verse. Like, goddamn. So yeah. after that, he says, "R.I.P. Rest in peace, Biggie and Pac. Where for y'all should be living, but I ain't trying to beef with him because he might put a hit on me like Keefy D. Get him. If y'all don't know who Keefy D is, Keefy D is the guy who's currently doing time in prison for Tupac's murder. So by Eminem saying that, he's kind of saying, oh. Diddy set it up to set this guy up Mm -hmm. for putting him in jail, but he's the one that put the hit on Tupac. So it's like he was just going in on Diddy. And I'm like, yo, he don't give a fuck, right? Then Mm -hmm. the wordplay keeps going. He goes, and that's the only way you're going to be killing me. Ain't going to be on no beat, silly. I beat the beat, silly, on the grind like teeth gritting? Nigga, what? Then call me obesity? You think it's overweight? It's just beginning? Yo, I, I don't care what you have to say <laughs> sure, about Eminem. Like, like, nah, nigga. Like, what the fuck? I've been trying to tell y'all. You know what? Get all your uh, fucking right. friends back on this podcast. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Y'all, 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 y'all heard that? That's the, like, the invite. <laughs> That's the invite. Get back on a fucking podcast. <laughs> Get all your little friends back over here. Oh, See what they have to say shit. now. I told you. I told you he's, a good, he's the best. All right, and then this is the part where he, like, I was like, oh, it's, it's, it's a wrap. You know, anybody, like, this album came out in the month of July, July 19th. We have until August 19th. Nobody can use any words beginning with the letter C until August 19th. Because when he said, and constant compliments give me confidence across the common sense and incompetence, incognizant, and conflicts are a consequence of accomplishments that conference through an incompetence. And like he just kept doing that whole C rhyme scheme. I was like, mm-hmm. nah, this nigga is leaving Earth. Like he just. Wait, why can't anyone say anything with Because yeah, he said that? every word in the alphabet, like every word in the English dictionary that begins with the word C, like he owns oh. it now. Like y'all can't oh, okay. use any words with the letter C until after 7 p.m. Like, like you land on it now, pay rent. <laughs> yeah, that literally like he he flexed on it on so many ways. And then he made do not the, pass go. Do not collect yeah. $100. Then he made the, right. the, the metaphor and the punch at the Alec, Alec Baldwin situation. Now, I'm Alec Baldwin. What I mean is bucking you. Coupe de Gras then right in between the fucking. And I'm like, yo, then he just. <laughs> Yo, I, I, I can't stress this enough. And y'all probably like, God oh, damn, Ortiz, like, calm down, like, relax. And I'm about to. I just, but I had to just give fucking credit to where credit is due. Because, look, I'm even guilty of it, too, where I've kind of, like, you know, run up. F- You've as thrown a fan. shade on Slim Shady. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah I, I've criticized some of the stuff. But, like, you know, look, if I don't like it, I don't like it. But if it's fire, it's fire. So, like, I just got to be honest, you know. And then the hook. It was also fire, bro. Come on. He's literally telling you, like, if I run out of fuel, I won't. What the fuck y'all going to do if I don't run out of fuel? And that's kind of what he's telling you. Like, I'm going to do this forever. I'm going to do this till I die. And you're not going to be able to keep up with me. And for me personally, when I heard this record, it just solidified him as one of the goats. Because Alexei said something earlier where how, like, we've been listening to the M for, like, three decades, right? We've been listening to this character, his life, his struggles, everything. It's all been in the media. He talks about it, right? 
And I wanted to just make a couple comments real quick. Eminem is the only artist, or I think rap artist, that have gone platinum in three different different decades. He's also had number one albums in three different decades. And in the three different decades that this motherfucker has been rapping, you cannot say he cannot rap. Like, if you get on a track with Eminem, you have to come with it. And I have never heard a song that Eminem has been on with another artist where they outshined him. I've never heard it. It ceases yeah, to exist. Yeah, you mentioned this in our last podcast about Toby when he broke it down himself. Yeah. And it goes to show. Right. Yeah, and I'm saying, like, it ceases to exist. So I understand for maybe some people that, like, maybe he's just operating on a level that most can't process, so it's just disgusting. Like, we live in a generation now where people it are, is just, disgusting. are just so lazy. He's nasty. Yeah, <laughs> like, they don't want to put in the work to kind of, like, process what he's saying. But just because your level of intellect or processing information is below average... Does it give you the right to criticize someone giving information at an above average rate? Like road rage. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm sorry, you don't have an opinion anymore. Like, if you can't break down these lines or understand what he's saying, I don't want to hear from you because you don't know (laughs) shit. Like, I'm sorry. Chris just came out. Fuck that red light. I'm trying to get even. I I just I gotta keep it a bucket. I'll probably like see a dick rider. I love lyrics. (laughs) And this nigga's barring y'all to death. Like he's barring y'all to death. That's what I was saying. Like, yo, rap has literally evolved, right? We complain like, oh, Eminem don't evolve, blah blah blah. I don't give a fuck no more. Get on the track and I'll spit this nigga. He evolved rap thirty years ago. Still, no one has caught up. I- I'm I'm done. The argument's done. Like that's what I've been saying, bro. <laughs> yo, like say, get him. It's your turn. I'm tagging you. That's in. what I've been saying. <laughs> yo, bring all your fucking little friends back. <laughs> I want to talk to them again. Where's Tyler? <laughs> <laughs> and that's another thing, right? Like, his debut in the streaming era. Like, not a lot of people would have the success that Eminem has right now. And it's just like, and I know people like to make the arguments because he's white. How many white rappers are there now that still don't even have an, a percentage of the success that Eminem has? And yeah, you could say it's like legacy, like he's one of the ODs. But at the same time, a lot of the OG guys don't get the same recognition. So in a sense... He's kind of got two things actually working against him. He's an older also, rapper who comes yeah. from a generation before. So people are like, oh, that's an old head. I want to hear the new shit. And he's white. And like y'all already like holding that against him. And the fact that he still has the number one album, dethroned Taylor Swift, like broke debuts with the streaming records for his albums and releasing. I don't want to hear shit no more. Like y'all just shut the fuck up, sit down and just sit in the corner. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Alexia. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, because even uh, back when he, he was getting signed, Dr. Trey didn't know he was white until he met him in person. Yeah. And then that even then he didn't he wasn't like, oh, what? No, I can't do this. Like, just stop being racist. And I saw a thing that the other day that actually made a lot of sense that has to do with this. Like, I don't I'm not saying that if you don't like a M&M, you're racist. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying, you know, using that like crutch or that get out of jail, get out of jail free card, like Eminem's white. Like, that does not matter. He's still like probably the top three if not best rapper ever but anyway um you can't just be like oh no it's because he's white that he has all this fame or it's it's because he's white he's even getting the attention because blah blah it's just like you are all in a sense prejudiced in that way if you're gonna do that because you don't love the culture then because eminem is literally about the culture also being racist is not like an on-off switch and it's also not like oh i'm not racist i can't i can't be racist because xyz racism is like like hunger right so Mm -hmm. it's like it comes and goes so like if something pisses you off and you you see something that you don't really like you say or you think something like that's that's you being prejudiced or racist and then if something doesn't bother you then you're fine you know what i'm saying like there everyone has their like um like the buttons they push or the straw on the camel's back right yeah my point is it doesn't matter that eminem is white i think it bothers most people that as a white man he is killing it in the rap scene which is sort of unfair unfairly if that's a word trying to be so clicky where they're like well we created this thing about our struggle and about our you know growing up with the projects and blah blah blah. and it's like i i'm there for that like i i'm not trying to step on your feet but eminem grew up in the projects too so you know the same thing we did the podcast about who can say the n-word right yeah and eminem doesn't 
he's still respecting all of you like on that level i guess in a sense but he's still like you said out barring everybody yeah, underground and, and above ground rappers yeah and he goes against his political views or agenda like he challenges his audience to the point where they're like okay i'm not fucking with him anymore and to your point of what you said uh there's actually a clip of 50 cent actually saying this and you gotta love 50 cent for being loyal and sticking to his friend and the 50 guy cent is real yeah and the guy who put him on 50 cent literally says that like Yo, like, I think it was an interview we was talking about where Jay-Z and Eminem were doing a tour together. He's like, and he's like, the touring company that they have had to package it like that because they had to make it seem like they're on the even playing field. But he's like, they're not. He's like, Eminem has sold way more records than Jay-Z. He's the bigger star. But that's what they had to do in order to get their money back. And he says, like, there's a lot of people in the industry, a lot of black artists. It doesn't sit right with them that the fact that you have a white artist who does black music and he does it better than everybody else. And it's like, yeah, it's people like, are going to hate really it, but it is what it them. is. Yeah. And, like, look, that my question is for the audience right now, like, because I think a lot of times people want to say, well, Eminem isn't of the culture. And I could see where that's coming from. But my question to you then is like, what is the African-American culture? Is it struggle? Is it gang violence? Is it poverty? Like, is it like, in other words, is it something you actually want to promote? Exactly. Because I meet a lot of black people who do not say that is part of their cu culture, just like in white culture, right? You have people who live in the suburbs and people who live in the trailers, but there's something else that they connect under. So my point to saying that is like Eminem comes from this supposed, he maybe didn't like do with racism, like from police and stuff, but he dealt with racism from African-Americans when he was trying to come into the hip hop scene who would not give him a chance because he was white. He mm -hmm. dealt with poverty by living in trailers. Like he actually was like homeless. Uh, his mom was on drugs. His father left him. Like, he did not have it easy. Um, if you guys haven't seen it, I re I highly implore that you check out a documentary. It's a four-part miniseries. I think episode two is called The Defiant Ones. And they tell the story of Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, how they came up in episode two, talks about how Dr. Dre met Eminem and signed Eminem. And that Dr. Dre was actually at the lowest point in his career. Tupac had just died. Death Row Records was going all to shit. And he left everything on the table and he found this mixtape or this demo of this guy rapping, like Alexi said early, and he had no idea that the dude was white. Eminem came, was wearing a yellow jumpsuit, and everybody was telling Dr. Dre, he's white. Look, he got blue eyes. Like, you can't have this. And Dr. Dre said that he put all the marbles on Eminem and said, like, something told him, believe in this guy. And he became the biggest rap star ever. Watch That's it. wild. Watch it. And I'm just saying, like, you have to respect it. And Eminem still pays homage and respect to Dr. Dre for doing oh, that. Oh, facts. You yeah, know? yeah. So, I don't know. Th these are just things, like, I feel like people talking out of their ass at this point. You know, because maybe it's they're like, just mad it's not them. I mean, I think that could be that, too. It's just jealousy. Like, why is he getting the success and the doors opening up for him? It's like, well, because how many of y'all talent? Yeah. Like, how many of y'all willing to put in that kind of work to rap on that kind of level? Because I know yeah. a lot of rappers don't. And like, that's why there's so few like elites. That's why when we talk about the greatest, like it really comes down to like a top 10, top 20. And then after that, it's kind of like uh, it's preference. Because there aren't a lot of people that really are able to operate on that level of lyricism and then have the success to go with it. It's very far and few between that are able to do that. So you have to give him his props. You have to. You there, have to. Yeah, there are a lot of lyricists that can wrap their ass off. I will say there's Lupe Fiasco, Black Thought, Feral Monch. You know, the list goes on yeah. and on. But yeah. they don't have the same success. And it's like, well, it's not just about the lyrics. And I'm not knocking them because... They're amazing artists. Eminem even gives them props. But you have to get the respect that he's able to rap on that level and have the success of a Jay-Z, a Drake, a Kanye West, who also cannot rap on the same level as Eminem. You know what I'm saying? And for three decades. Yeah. Going on four because he's not running out of fuel. It, wow. Nice pun. Nice pun. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so that that's my take on the album. I thought it was great. I love that he did a concept piece. I mean, we talked about that in a previous podcast. Like, that's kind of what I wanted from him. So, 
Okay, wait. So I was hearing, I don't know if this is like a theory, like a fan theory or like an actual rumor, mm-hmm. but some people were like, if you play the album backwards, it's opposite. Like it's Marshall killing Slim instead. Okay, yeah. So I'm glad you brought that up. So I actually listened to the album backwards. And? And I just want to say, uh, that's not true. Okay, thank you. Yeah, because it's, it's literally I- people <laughs> trying to like add some more depth and layers to it. And yeah, that aren't there, right? It yeah, doesn't make sense. It's not it doesn't there. make sense if that were the thing, right? And then I heard like he there's like a side B, which is kind of cool because it's obviously like cassette tapes, right? Like mm-hmm. Gen Zs and beyond do not know what that means. Like cassette tape side B, <laughs> like what? Definitely not. So like yeah, that was kind of cool that he he like not leaked but hinted at a side B. But yeah, some people were saying the side B was uh <laughs> that the album backwards, and I was like, this that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, I because I, I remember when uh, Kendrick came out with Damn. Damn is an album that is like that, but people got thrown off because when the album first came out, Damn, you listen to it straight through, right? And it's a story. But okay. then a week later, people are like, oh, Kendrick Lamar dropped another album. But it was just the album Damn in reverse. But that's an actual album that, yeah, if you listen to it in two different orders, it has a completely different story. And I'm Oh, not, really? Yeah, it does. Now, Who was it you said? Kendrick? Uh, Kendrick Lamar, yeah, his third oh, album. Okay. But uh, in the case of Eminem, and I'm not, it's not, it's not taking anything away because a concept art album is very hard to create. It's not easy, yeah. you know. So, let I, alone backwards. Exactly. So. so I just think people just played it in back in reverse and kind of like convinced themselves that's what it was because the subject matter is being talked about it. Okay, but, that's what I thought, and yeah. I didn't want to say that without like I guess having evidence, but there. Like, and I'm going to go on a tangent, but this is still relevant because mm. <laughs> that's how I work. Crazy. Um, like, back in high school and college, right? I don't know if you guys had a summer reading list. So oh, I thought you were going to say, I don't know if go... you guys had high school or college where you're from. But, yeah. That's <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> reading list. Okay. Yeah, summer reading list. So, like, but before you could go into the next grade, you had to read, or I had to read, like, six, like, <laughs> huge books and then who have like extensive reports on them and then the first day of school we went right into like talking about the books and the symbolism stuff oh, right okay damn. so okay so you didn't have that cool anyway yeah. i just had recommended lot... reading but we didn't have to do like any papers on them it's just like this what you should read in between grades but that was that oh oh my gosh i i'm not flexing at all because reading is great but like reading is fundamental <laughs> I did not enjoy it, but, um, yeah, so I was in, like, this, like, accelerated learning, like, almost program where, like, every grade I was in, we were getting classes and lessons or whatever for two years in advance. So, mm. let's say, obviously, I went into ninth grade, but we were doing 11th grade, like, work. So, like, 11th grade math, 11th grade science, 11th grade English, so stuff like that. So, yeah. it would just, every year was, anyway. So, the reading lists, the point I'm trying to get out, wow, fuck the reading, was, <laughs> There was a lot of books and there was a lot of like, and these were like classics, like um, A Raisin in the Sun, um, To the Lighthouse, obviously To Kill a Mockingbird, mm. uh, Brave New World, you know, like things like this. Like we would read it, like heavily digest them. So there was a lot of books where some of, sometimes the teacher would be like, oh, this symbolism, like this, like circle, let's say in the book symbolizes this and this. And I would be like, mm, and you know, a lot of the other students would be like, oh, I'm so stupid. I didn't see it the first time, but now that you say it, I get it. And when I read the book again, and I'm like, ew, no. And I'm like, are you sure that's what the author even intended, right? Mm. And I don't want to argue with my teachers, and I'm not saying I'm smarter than them. Please, like, don't, you know, crucify me. But I'm literally just like, there are some things that, like, I'm sure the the author confirmed and some things that are blatantly obvious and some things that maybe aren't. But then there has to be some symbolism things that just don't, like, make sense, that you're you're just making it up. And it makes sense in the sense where if you argue it long enough, then whoever you're talking to is going to be like, oh, okay, I could kind of see. And then everyone shuts up. And now it's a whole, it's in the curriculum. Like, it's so stupid. Yeah. no, Not everything, just certain things. No, yeah, I, I, see, I see what you mean. Yeah, there's certain things where, like, they just are what they are on the surface level. There is no added depth 
to them. Yeah. You know, but like some things are symbolic, not every single thing. Yeah, and like art is subjective. And I mean, like, and I, as an artist myself and other artists I've spoken to, that's actually kind of the fun of it. Like, if you talk to any artist, some is definitely intentional, you know, definitely yeah. on purpose for you to look into it. Right. So, in but, my opinion, right, if my teacher read the book and she was like, oh, this means this to me, and I'm like, oh, well, it didn't mean that to me, but in another part of the book, something else meant something different to me, that's what you're talking about, right? Like, we have this story and we're like, all we have is our imaginations and we're hallucinating in, in these living rooms by ourselves reading these books and we have different experiences, slightly, slightly different. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the point is, um, back to the symbolism, I think that these people that were like, this, this CD backwards, is this? Like, it's the same thing. They were just like, oh, I found something that kind of seems like it works and it sounds so cool. And then like they would post it all over their social media you know, like, I'm the first one to think of it, or I, I listen to it backwards, and it makes so much sense, and it was just like, no, you look stupid, because I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, break it, break it down like that, but, like, okay, Somebody Save Me could work either way, right, that's the first or the last song, but then, like, two songs later, in Toby, if we're going backwards now, he literally kills Slim Shady, and then Slim Shady, you know, so the first two songs, Slim Shady's not even there, and then you're like, oh, he kills, he kills Slim Shady, now, now Slim Shady's dead, but the fourth song, going backwards, now he's there, it doesn't make any sense. Like, shut up. I want to quote J. Cole. J. Cole, okay. sa J. Cole said this, saying I think it perfectly surmises it. This is off of first-person shooter. J. Cole says this, and it's fucking true. Niggas so thirsty to put me in beef, dissected my words and start looking too deep. I look at the tweets and start sucking my teeth. I'm letting it rock because I love the mystique. Ooh. That's what it is. Sometimes y'all look too deep into their lyrics and try to that add was actually meanings. Really good. Yeah, actually start adding meaning to it that isn't there. And us as artists, we just let it rock because like, you know what? You're making my shit seem deeper than what it is. So you know mm, what? Yeah, yeah. We'll just let you just have that. You yeah. know what you let rock? That whole fucking story about summer reading list when you could have just quoted J. Cole and I would have skipped that whole thing. Nah, that's all right. You know, I just felt like you need to get that off your chest, so why not, you know? <laughs> I went um, I went on my rant, so I figured, like, you know, you know, let you get your shit off. Pause. Cool, we each got a rant now. <laughs> there you go. That's it. But, yeah, with all Equality, that, guys, <laughs> with that, y'all, um, yeah, definitely check out the Eminem album if you haven't. It's out. It's oh, called... if you haven't, we're not friends. Like, Damn, what? all right. I'm not going to go that far. But, you know, <laughs> I implore you that you check it out. Um, Yeah, it's called The Death of Slim Shady. So definitely check it out. It's uh one of Eminem's best projects to date.